Good morning, dear church family. Let us read from the word of God and start our service today. And Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord all the times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. Amen. Let us pray and commit the service into the Lord's hand. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and also for giving us this privilege to be in your house and to worship you. And Father, as we enter into this time of worship and fellowship, we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to lift our eyes to you. Help us to sing your praises with passion and conviction. Help us to listen to your word with reverence and obedience. Help us to pray with faith and humility. And Father, may it transform us to live for your glory and to share your love with one another. We commit this service into your hands and pray this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, family, let us join our worship team to praise and worship our Lord. Shall we all rise and worship together?
You will fill us with your presence, with your love, Lord. <coughs> that you will fill us with your power, your power to proclaim your name, Lord. The message you bring, the gift of salvation, Father, that is free for all, Lord. To fill us with your love and power and your courage, Lord. To hear your call and respond and to go, Lord, as a church, Father. Thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And please be seated. Uh, thank you, worship team, for uh, leading us beautifully into worship. Second uh, Corinthians 9.11 says, You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Dear family, let us give thanks for the past week. Lord, we thank you for the weekly ministries, for the Mindanil, ladies' prayer meeting, men's prayer meeting, Prime Timers visit, Lord. We thank you, Father, and we welcome back Brother Nicodemus worshiping with us and Sister Mridula. Father, we thank you for Brother Mani, Turkey, and Sister Manju blessing them with a baby boy. We are thankful, Lord, for blessing them. Father, we are thankful for those who celebrated their birthdays last week. We thank you for Gaiselu, Jaden, Rakuzia, Joash, Yamrin. And today, as they celebrate their birthday, Sister Anita Koshi, Brother Sudipto, Sister Thami Zimik. Father, thank you for adding one more year in their lives. Father, we thank you for the anniversaries of Brother Samson and Sister Simi Kamson. And Father, we thankful as Brother Sunil Vadva and Sister Mary Vadva they celebrate the anniversary today, Lord. We thank you for their wedding anniversaries. We ask your blessing upon them, Lord. Father, we are thankful for all the blessings you gave us past week, Lord. We pray this prayer in the name of our Lord, loving Jesus Christ. Next, we'll have Vita and children's talk. 
थैंक यू Praise the Lord family. My name is Thomas Kisku and I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior in 2014. After my schooling in 2016, I went to Lucknow Anugrah Ashram for Bible course. I completed the ashram course and then I got the opportunity to come to Delhi Bible Institute Bible Bhavan. And then I completed that course successfully. Delhi Bible Institute has not only given me the great time of learning the word of God but try to make me the great lover of god's word and have given me the serving heart after the completion of my course i did 3 years of internship in delhi bible institute and bible bhavan and have learned about the importance of god's word in my life and in april 24 2022 i was ordained as a youth pastor in hindi church under the mentorship of senior pastor isaac i have learned about the serving the lord faithfully have learned the life lessons church history church saints biographies and got the opportunity to preach and teach the god's people i thank the lord for this good opportunity again to serve him in ranchi anugraha i ask everybody pray for me and for my team that we can serve faithfully and grow in the word and extend the kingdom of god thank you children what form of government do we practice we are a parliamentary democracy the role of the people is wise in the eyes of the world but in the bible god shows us that when men rule and have nothing to do with god things unravel there is only one king we must bow before who is that myra i know no other king other than the lord and his name is melek 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 means king now that's a common word and can be applied to many kinds of persons of authority in the first books of the bible god doesn't use the title king but from the structures presented to us in that portion he makes it clear that his people are under his kingship the old covenant is set up in language that reflects the treaties of a suzerain a big king and his vassal a smaller king the ark and tabernacle represent the throne and the royal tent of the king in the midst of his people in later books the call to see god as king is clearer and god's portion of all his providence that his people owe him is a tenth a tithe A king demands complete surrender only then can he be your savior Now look at Jesus he steps off the throne he has no home of his own he dies for his people saving them from sin and he takes on their shame and rejection what an unusual king and all he asks for in return is our surrender so he can save us Do we reflect our king in our love forgiveness and humility towards others are we ready to join the chosen few who can come to his throne room today the door is open let's pray thank you milek king jesus you step down from your throne you sit at our table you call to us you carry us you look for us like a shepherd you live in the fields with us and you are found among the poor and the lowly You do not lord your majesty upon us and so we can come to you. You are the king we don't deserve but the king we absolutely need. We bless you, Milek, King Jesus. I pray that not a single person in this hall, in this 
church today will miss the chance of calling upon your name. And thank you, Father, for sending us your son, the king who was willing to die for his subjects, taking on their shame, their sin, their faults, and doing it willingly. Thank you, Father, for raising him from the dead, vindicating his role as our righteous king, our righteous Melech. In your precious and wonderful name, Melech Jesus, we pray. Amen. Family, we are in that part of our worship this morning where we bring our confessions before the Lord. I will lead you in a prayer of confession. And when I pause, that will be your opportunity to bring your personal confessions before the Lord. Let us all confess. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous to us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past. Grant that we may ever from now on serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive these words of assurance of pardon. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. These were taken from Psalm 51, verses 7 to 10. Shall we bring family the needs of the church before the Lord in prayer? Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, your law is perfect, converting the soul. A sure testimony, giving wisdom to the unlearned and enlightening the eyes. We humbly beseech you through your boundless goodness to enlighten our blind intellect by your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly understand and profess your law and live according to it. Since it has pleased you, most merciful Father, to reveal the mysteries of your will only to the little ones, and since you look to him who alone who is of humble and contrite spirit, who has reverence for your word, grant us a humble spirit and keep us from all fleshly wisdom, which is enmity against you. Bring to the right way those who stray from the truth, so that we all may unanimously serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life. We ask this, Lord, for all of us and our families. We very specially pray for peace in our nation, Lord. Very specially this year, with the general elections taking place and elections to other state assemblies taking place. Lord, we pray for peace. Lord, we pray for peace also in Manipur, Lord. And Lord Jesus, all those who have lost places of worship and homes, that they would be restored uh, to them as well. Lord, we pray for those who are long-term ill. We pray for uh, Thomas Koshi's cousin, Annie John, and for Divya's uh, mom, uh, Renu Bakla. Extend your healing hand on them. We pray for the cancer patients in Asha, Ashley Poland, Mark Lawrence, Sheba Verghese, Ronnie M, 
and Sanjay Pandit, and we ask your healing upon them, Lord. Lord Jesus, we pray very specially for the elderly parents. We pray for Mr. V. I. Chako and Mrs. Maria Machako, Mrs. Aking Liu, Mrs. Nalamal, Mr. Krishna Kumar Bhatt, Mrs. Elidas, Das, Mr. Suresh Chandra, Mrs. Yolanda Oheda, Mrs. Rameshwari Devi, Mr. Sukhbir Singh, Mrs. Indra Kapoor, Mrs. Gai Khan, Mrs. Agnes Charles, Mrs. Rani Harman, Mrs. Daniel Shakur, and Mr. T.K. Thomas and Elizabeth Thomas, um, Mr. J.M. Kapoor, and Mr. Tilak Rajarora. Lord Jesus, we pray for each one of our elderly, and very especially with the peculiar circumstances in which they go through every day in a new way. Lord Jesus, we pray uh, that those who give them care and those who are taking care of them and are around them, Lord, and that you would give them a lot of grace. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you would keep our elderly in good health and strength. We pray for those who have been engaged, Rahul and Michelle, Awung and Joyce, Mayank and Sakshi, Roshan and Catherine. Lord, we pray that you would bless these engagements, Lord, and the oncoming days of wedding. We pray for Rahul and Michelle's wedding uh, on 8th uh, tomorrow. We pray for Awung and Joyce's wedding on 24th January. We pray for Mayank and Sakshi's wedding on 3rd of uh, February and for Roshan and Catherine's wedding on 1st of March. We pray that all that is needed for these uh, to go well would be provided by you. We pray for the expectant mothers, Rachel, John, Bhavana and Muskan. Lord, we pray that the babies that they are carrying would be brought safely into this world. Lord, very specially, Lord, our hearts uh, go out for Pastor Honey's uh, family, Lord, uh, in the home call uh, of their father, Lord, on 2nd of January. Lord, we pray that you would console them, fill them with hope, and uh, fill their lives uh, with the joy of the life, the good life that their father lived, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you would bring your peace and your consolation uh, to the family at this time. Lord Jesus, we pray for those who have their birthdays and anniversaries uh, this coming week, Lord. We pray for Jairesh, for Rachel, for uh, Manasseh, uh, for Carolyn, for the wedding anniversaries that are coming of Hantok and Hongla Fom, uh, for Parigombo and, uh, and Manai, uh, for Aaron and Achingliu. Uh, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would uh, bless these uh, marriages and give a lot of joy. Very specially, Lord, we want to pray for Pastor Anil today uh, in Raipur, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you would uh, bless the work of his hands uh, and the leadership of the center uh, over there. Lord Jesus, we pray for the prayer ministries that go on. And very specially, we pray for the ministry that goes on during the service, Lord, with Annie and the prayer team. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would lead them uh, in a way to pray uh, that uh, uh, would be discerning uh, of those around them, Lord. Lord Jesus, we pray for uh, uh, the care group ministry also, and we, uh, we commit LP into your hands, Lord, and we want to give you thanks, Lord, uh, for his work and his leadership, Lord. Lord Jesus, we pray for uh, the work of the church worldwide, Lord, your body that is in the world. Uh, one billion souls will turn to Jesus and would know him as their Lord and Master, Lord. Lord Jesus, we want to commit our Prime Minister and our President, uh, our President and the Governor of our land. Uh, we pray for the Central Cabinet, the leaders of the state government, the leaders who are in opposition. We pray for the members of the armed forces, Lord, those who sacrificially serve this land. Lord Jesus, we pray that all those who run the affairs of this country, Lord, we commit them into your hands and ask uh, for your blessing upon them. Lord, as we listen to your word uh, by your servant, Pastor Abon, uh, oh, make your word a swift word, Lord, passing from the ear to the heart, from the heart to the lips and conversation, uh, that as the rain returns not empty, so neither may your word uh, return empty, but accomplish that for which it was given. Lord God, of might inconceivable, of glory incomprehensible, of mercy immeasurable, of goodness ineffable, O Master, look down upon us in your tender love and show forth towards us and those who pray with us your mercies 
and your compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Family, could I encourage you to kindly be upstanding in your place as we confess our faith through reading together, reciting together the Nicene Creed. Church, what do we believe in? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy universal church. We acknowledge one baptism. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kindly be seated. I have the pleasure to announce the marriage bands of Mayank and Sakshi. If you can kindly rise up for a moment. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, Mayank Rawal, bachelor, member of the Bible Bowen Christian Fellowship. Uh, son of Mr. Pawan Rawal and Mrs. Nethu Rawal, a residence of 116 Antariksha apartment, H Block, Vikaspuri, New Delhi, and Miss Sakshi Bhatt, spinster, member of the Bible Born Christian Fellowship, daughter of Mr. K.K. Bhatt and late Miss Kumud Bhatt, residence of 50. Amrita Sherkil Mark, New Delhi, since 2017. Their marriage has been fixed on 3rd February 2024 at 12 p.m. at Bible Bowen Christian Fellowship, 50 Amrita Sherkil Mark, New Delhi. <coughs> if anyone knows of just and true cause or any impediment due to which this marriage should not be solemnized, then it should be brought to the notice of the pastors of Bible Born Christian Fellowship. This is the first call of the marriage bans dated January 7th, 2024. Thank you. It's time for the junior church children, teachers, and volunteers to leave for the Bible classes. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's prepare ourselves to read and hear God's word. So if anyone is in need of a Bible, could you raise your hands and the ushers will hand over a Bible to you. Thank you team. A gentle reminder to switch off your mobile phones or keep them in silent mode to avoid any interruption while reading or listening to God's word. You may take a moment to do so.
and for any emergency purpose you may need to step out of the premises kindly use the back door and not the two doors at the front shall we all rise to sing the pulpit hymn Turn to Luke chapter 16, the passage for today. Luke chapter 16. If you are using our Bible, our church Bible, you'll find it paid in on page 876. We will be reading from verse 19 till 31. Luke chapter 9, 16, 19 to 31. This is God's word. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, who, was fe who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things, but now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, 
for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. This is God's word. Praise be to him. You may be seated, please. Let us spend a moment in prayer asking the Lord to help us. The gracious Father, we pray that our spiritual eyes may be open to see what you want to show us through your word. That our ears may be quickened to hear and our minds sharpened and that our hearts be softened to obey. We ask this for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ in his name. Amen. I wonder what went through your mind uh, as we read the passage together. An artist like Michelangelo can portray a powerful image of what is being conveyed in this passage. Abraham and Lazarus on the other, on one side of the chasm, on the other side the unnamed rich man being tormented. The painter will certainly add many more faces in both the sides. Relaxed and joyful faces with Abraham along with Lazarus on the other side, faces of agony in the company of the rich man. What do we preach from here? What is the emphasis made here? And out of this multifaceted text, we need to detect what Luke, the author, wants his reader to hear as the primary message. Sometimes our conversation covers a lot of subjects to give a background to a single emphasis. Our passage is one with many subjects. One can be tempted to talk about what life after death looks like. He need not be wrong to be considering this passage. Another can talk about the need to take care of the poor while we live here, a subject not a wrong one in itself. In such dilemma, we can be guided by certain study tools to identify the emphasis. One such tool is the literary context. And what we do in that? We read the passages before and after, then read the whole chapter closely, finally read the whole of Luke's gospel, and then understand it in the light of what the whole Bible has to say. The Bible focuses on one subject. Incidentally, we talked about that last week, the death and resurrection of Jesus is the unifying interpretative center of the scripture according to the scripture. We will go back to that. And Jesus pointed out um, that in the Emmaus walk on the evening of the resurrection, the Old Testament points forward to him and the New Testament points back to him. It is all about Jesus. So we will keep that in mind even as we look at a passage like this. And so let us look at the context uh, of our passage going back to verse 16. If you would follow with me, the law and the prophets were until John, since the good since then the good news of the kingdom of God is preached and everyone forces his way into it. The law and the prophets. Take note of that. And, and notice the same subject is repeated in the next verse, in verse 17. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one dot of the law to become void. Let everything on earth and in the skies be removed. One thing will remain. The word of God will remain. Let us speak the subject of the law and the prophets and go back to our passage 
uh, down there in 29. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. The team is repeated again in verse 31. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Moses, the law of Moses, or simply the law, are the same thing referring to the scripture. Today we call it the Bible or the Word of God. So having used the tools of context and the tools of repetition, we naturally recognize the author's emphasis. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. The message is crystal clear. Abraham and the man did not talk further about how comfortable Lazarus is, how bad it is to be tormented in Hades. They are not talking about life on earth. They, the conversation narrows down to one subject. Therefore, we can confidently give a title to the sermon as, Hear the Word. Hear the Word. They have the Bible. Let them read. Let them listen and do all they can with what it has to say. So as we study it, um, we will, it will reveal to us about, number one, the sufficiency of the word. That's our first point. The proposal of the rich man sounds very practical, isn't it? If somebody like Lazarus comes back to life and warn those who are ungodly, they will fear and turn to God. And this will be the same concern among all those who ended up in the same place of torment. All of them will be in agreement that the solution will be found in raising Lazarus from the dead. This is understandable. You and I need not even die to think about this, uh, in, even in our simple experiences of life. For Say, for example, you are caught in a traffic jam or you observe that that particular se segment of the city has a lot of traffic jam in that part of the uh, DR, then we warn our friends, avoid that route because there, are, there is traffic jam. We want to warn our loved ones of the bad things we experience in life. Same thing happening here. The rich man wants to warn his five brothers. Look at how interesting the conversation took place. First, the rich man wants relief from the flame. He requested Abraham to send Lazarus with a drop of water to cool his tongue. Abraham explained to him that is impossible. Now he remembers his five brothers who are still alive on earth. So if Lazarus cannot come to him, let him be sent back to earth as to represent some, uh, someone coming from, back from the dead. How logical, isn't it? Who would not like to listen to a man who went and saw the whole thing there? The whole world will tune in to listen if his interview is to be uh, telecast live. But God has a better idea. Verse 29, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. They have the Bible. Let them pay attention to what it what is instructed there, pay attention to it and obey, and then they will not end up in the place of, a torm of torment. How is that so? The Pharisees love money. Going back to the context in verse 14, verse 14 tells us that they will do anything to safeguard their means of getting rich. They befriended wicked and powerful people. They formed alliance with the world, the authorities. They say to the Romans that Jesus and his disciples were a threat to the empire. How crafty is that? Conveniently, they worked out their security. They need the protection. Although they are the experts in the law of Moses, being the Pharisees or the religious leaders of the time, they don't want to do anything with it, however. That is why the rich man's wrong choice was told to warn them because they were also pursuing riches 
money. If they have been reading what Moses wrote, they will be careful to secure their soul by paying heed to God. For example, in Deuteronomy 30, we are told, verse 9, The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you as he took delight in your fathers. When you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes that are written in this book of the law. When you turn to your Lord your God with all your heart, with, it, with, with all your soul. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you can do it. God has made his word absolutely easy to understand. He has made it ac accessible. What can be nearer than what you have in your, in your mouth and in your heart? And he goes on to say in verse 15, See, I have said before you today, life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live. That's what Moses said as the command of God. Not only that, God has made his word understandable and accessible. He has made it absolutely beneficial. See, there is great reward in obeying it. I go on to read in verse 19, Deuteronomy 30. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life, that your offspring, you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life and land of days. So what Abraham is saying to the rich man let your five brothers read this. Then they will not end up here. The chasm described by Abraham is one created by the choice of mankind. Some chose life and some chose death. How do you choose life? By hearing and obeying God's word. Where can I hear the word? If God says his word was available for those who lived in the ancient time, how much more do we have access to it today? We have our personal copies, hard copies. You have it uh, in your devices, whatever that you are using. It is near you. You cannot say, I have no access to it. And you may ask, what do I benefit it if I hear God's word? Life. You cannot say, nobody told me how necessary it is for me to hear God's word. No. Choose life that you and your offspring may live. It is in your mouth. Even parrots with tiny brain can repeat what humans keep saying. Toddlers talk, but what they talk is what they heard their parents talk. They don't compose new words. They only repeat what they learn. Let them listen to them and listen to what their parents talk. When Moses says the word is in your mouth, he means to say that like a father, he has been speaking the word of God to them over and over that now they can say it themselves. There is no excuse. One can choose Life, because God's word is not hidden, nor it is hard to understand. The Bible is full of its claim. 
that it is the means God gives to, so that man and woman may listen, believe, repent, and be saved. I will quote only what Paul says about the Bible as we move on to the next point. All scripture is breathed out by God, 2 Timothy 3, 16, and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Our second point, this insufficiency in miracles. We have seen the first point as the sufficiency of the scripture. We believe in miracles, not just the miracles of nature we observe every day, the sunrise and the stars and, and everything around us. There are miracles, no doubt. But we also believe in the supernatural operations of God in dealing with the world today. Well, according to his sovereign plan and purpose, be it in healing, in clearing obstacles, and even in raising of the dead. Yet, from what we read here, we are to understand that without paying heed to the word of God, miracles themselves alone are ineffective to save sinners. In other words, miracles cannot replace the primacy of preaching. Look with me the insistence of the rich man in verse 29, 30, and he said, No, Father Abraham, if, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. What he is saying, essentially, is that he is arguing, actually, that he does not believe in the sufficiency of the Scripture. Let me say that this notion is prevalent even among the believers today. While I should not be unkind to those who practice this, I have to point out that the real tension, tension exists in the churches today because of this. Those who rely on dreams, visions, hearing of words, the impression that they get when they get, uh, come into some place, the numbers that they start calculating, and all kinds of spiritual sounding teaching or admonitions, they are saying we do not believe the Bible is sufficient to get people to believe in God. This is the insistence to provide what is incompetent. It is going to, not going to be productive, and they don't want to do anything with the Word, with the Bible. Beware of those churches whose primary focus is on the supernatural work displayed in their services and very little attention. They don't even open the Bible. They don't deal with the Bible to listen to what it has to say. If someone returns from the dead, they will be convinced that is what they assume. We agreed earlier this is the logical thing to do. If there is God, prove it to me. We often hear this um, uh, uh, when we, uh, when we uh, talk about God. Show me a sign. You heard that a lot you're debating with unbelievers. We will see if signs or miracles will work. Again, even among believers, people are just so preoccupied with signs and wonders. Preaching has lost its prominence of church ministry. Why do people fall asleep while the sermon is on? Why is the hall packed only for concerts? We cannot blame the members. The preachers are given the responsibility to uphold and promote the preaching so that people hear the word loud and clear. The leadership is entrusted with the role to ensure that the word of God holds preeminence in church ministry. It is not man's idea or proposal. It is prescriptive in the Bible that the Bible preaching takes the highest priority. If someone falls asleep during the sermon, it is not because the word of God is boring. The lack of diligence in study and proclamation have made the sermon boring. If the audience look lost and distracted, the sweetness of the word has not been tapped and enjoyed by the preacher. How then can he make it sweet when he fails to taste it himself? 
Am I not preaching this to myself? Am I not challenging all of us who committed to teach our children, our care groups and other groups? Let us not only trust in the sufficiency of the word, but let us work hard to enjoy it first by ourselves. Let us not fall into the temptation of bringing extra means, believing that they may help our listeners today to obey. We may not be asking for miraculous signs and relying on them. We may even rely on entertainment. We may rely on our good works and testimonies. We may want to win debates and arguments. Let me repeat. We believe God can do miraculous works today. I want to repeat it just to make sure that I don't get misunderstood. Expect miracles as the outcome of faith. The scripture confirms and insists that we should expect miracles from God. Don't flip it by saying, show it to me first and then I will believe. Believe and then expect. Believe that you will be raised from the dead. Believe that you will be in heaven with the Lord Jesus. These are nothing short of miracles. The Bible says, choose life. Okay, I heard and believe. What will happen? You will have life. That's the miracle. And secondly, if we believe the Bible is sufficient, we will be working hard to speak only to the truth of the Bible. We will, be, we will open the Bible and try not to incorporate external resources to make the Bible more relevant as though the, it is not relevant. We will not be relying on stories, examples, or clever presentations. We will not be treating the Bible as a mystery book, thinking there must be a hidden message here. No, the Bible is simple enough for a child to understand. No doubt, it is also rich and deep enough that scholars can spend all their lives studying it and never exhausting its riches, richness. Our primary task then is to pay attention to what it says and trust in its authority and its sufficiency. The Lord Jesus was wary of people asking for signs as he preached the gospel. At one time he had to say, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the, fa that the Father is in me and I in the Father. That I am in the Father. But they continued to reject him See, that's the point we are making. Miracles are real, but they don't become the means to faith. But they are the indicators of one who believes. If somebody believes, expect miracles will take place through his life and ministries also. They are to prove the authenticity of the preachers as it was for Jesus and his disciples. John the Baptist inquired, if they are to believe that Jesus is the, the Lord, the Savior to come. So the Lord explains, yes, go tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them. And he would also remember that these signs don't always produce faith and repentance. In John chapter 2, Jesus performed signs and wonders, many believe, no doubt, but we are also told that Jesus knew men too well, so he did not commit himself to them. And sadly, many people ask for signs as to entertain themselves. They don't want the Savior, they want only to indulge watching him perform. Perhaps the best evidence is found in John chapter 12, but as we go there, let us mention our third point, the fulfillment of the word. The fulfillment of the word. The word became flesh. Jesus fulfills the law and the prophets. The immediate proof of what Abraham said is found in the life and ministry of Jesus. What did Abraham say? Verse 31, he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. So we have that well-known incident 
where another man named Lazarus was raised by Jesus, John 11. What happened as they saw Lazarus came back from dead? Many were amazed, and many indeed believed in Jesus. But something else astonishing was also taking place. John chapter 12, verse 9, when the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priest made plans to put Lazarus to death as well. That's not so very strange. Instead of rejoicing and celebrating, they want to put the man back to death who was just so who was just raised. Instead of believing and repenting, that's what they did. These chief priests, who are described earlier as those who love money, are seeking to kill Jesus. As their position is threatened by his rising popularity, they plan to kill both of them. This is the shocking response of sinful heart. Supernatural display of even raising the dead don't work for them. We are better prepared for the shock because Abraham already prepared so said so that this will be the case. Then the ultimate fulfillment of Abraham's word is in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Let us jump to that event when Jesus rose from the dead. The same crowd of religious leaders along with the soldiers were up to something again. You know what happened after the, the resurrection? The soldiers guarding the tomb reported the matter to the chief priests and the elders. And this is what they did in Matthew 28. When they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. Can human hearts be more hardened than this? The Lord and Savior rose before their own eyes. They can trust him for their salvation. Yet, money is more attractive now compared to the everlasting life in heaven. Unlike Peter and John, these authorities did not run to see the empty tomb. Their power, their safety in the worldly position and pleasures der derived from them are far more important than to see the, resurre than to see the resurrected Christ. And sadly, there will be people in hell, hard, to, hard fact to swallow. And people ask, if God is good, why is there hell? It is the other way around, actually. Hell is where everyone deserves to go. All sinners, including you and I. But the goodness of God is to prevent sinners going there. So last Wednesday, some of us attended the funeral of Pastor Honey's father. We are told about his life that in the last few days, he could not recognize even his children. He could remember what he did. He could remember his retirement. And the best was that he said he is going to be with Jesus as he dies. Praise God. Well, on the other side, the warning of the coming judgment against unbelievers does not sound convincing to them, does it? And I fear this is the same attitude among many of us today. Sinful life has made the ear turn deaf to the word of God. Hear the gospel so that you may not end up like the rich man. Think of Lazarus in this passage at the site of Abraham. Is he saved just because he lived a poor, miserable life? Or does it mean that to be rich is evil? Lazarus is not in heaven because he was poor. The rich man is in Hades not because he was rich. The poor can be condemned to and the rich can be saved. It all depends on how one responds to the gospel. Like Lazarus, we can be in heaven because Jesus went through the torment. On the cross, Jesus said, I thirst. 
he agonized like the rich man did in Hades. The Bible says he went down to the Hades. We confess this every week. The Apostle Creed says, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, or Hades. Thankfully, that is not the end of the story. It goes on to say, on the third day he rose again. He died, but death could not hold him because he was found without sin, the Bible says. He died the death of sinners, meaning he died on behalf of all those who otherwise would be sent to hell. The unnamed rich man could recognize Abraham. He is able to address him as Father Abraham. He had the knowledge of the scripture, but he did not have the saving faith. Similarly, the Lord Jesus warned, Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord will, will enter into God's kingdom. It is a scary matter. Not everyone who is baptized, not everyone whose name was found in Sunday school register, not everyone who is enlisted as a church member need not be found seated with Abraham, enjoying the blissful company of the saints who were washed by the blood of the Lamb, if they did not listen to God's word and obey. Why do we preach the gospel day in and day out? It is the only way God uses to draw people to himself. Does it matter who preaches it? No. It is in the faithfulness and the soundness of the preaching and teaching that the Lord will bless and bring forth fruits. Are you teaching our children? Are you leading a care group? Youth, women, men, be encouraged. Don't look for immediate results. Immediate results may happen from time to time. The question is whether there is consistency and faithfulness and soundness in your teaching. And so we are glad to announce that workshops on principles of Bible exposition will be held on the last Sundays of the months. It will be about eight sessions. That means the next eight months we are going to be sitting together after the service and go through the workshop. It is mandatory for those who teach the Bible in any department of BBCF ministries. The invitation, of course, is also open for all because it will still be helpful for personal Bible study or if you're leading family devotion. Many of us speak in other churches, I understand. And let us learn together. Secondly, we are very encouraged to get a good response for the community Bible reading plan. So till last night, 30 people have signed up. Uh, it is good because it is a platform of accountability and encouragement. You highlight a verse and the, group, the whole group will see. It's like Facebook. You get to see what people are doing. You finish reading it, the group will see who has finished reading. So our team last week at Bible Bhavan did a research, research and found a suitable one. If you read four chapters a day, spending about 15 minutes daily, you can finish it in 350 days, 53 days, not 365. So we still have 359 days left this year, being a leap year. You would have received the link in one of the WhatsApp groups sent again uh, last night and this morning. And if you did not receive that, you can leave your details at the front desk if you want to receive and be part of this community. If you want to read the Bible in private, that's it. absolutely fine. Personally, I find it, uh, I find strength in community efforts, be it in reading or in prayer. All right, let us summarize and close. The rich man is thirsty. Abraham could not cool his tongue. Then he thinks about his brothers. Still, Abraham could not raise Lazarus. It won't work if the scripture is not paid attention to. Here is Jesus who came down from heaven. Even better than Lazarus sent by Abraham. 
the Creator Himself came down. He raised the dead, including Lazarus. Sure enough, raising the dead didn't work for those who would not listen. He went across the chasm. Jesus, He suffered like the rich man, although He was sinless. He died and rose again. Still, it did not work for those who would not listen. And he is still speaking today. In Revelation, we read, I died and I am alive forevermore. I hold the keys of Hades and death. For those who believe, we are never tired of hearing the story again and again, especially when we are in doubt and when we find ourselves struggling in sin. We are never tired as we often sing. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. We love to sing. We love to hear. How about you? Hear the word. Would you? Yes, no. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Father, just one thing we want to go away from this place, that our ears may always be tuned to hear your word. Never let the noises in, of the world silence it. Never let our sinful desires Pursue other things apart from seeking you in your word. Let your word remain in our hearts, enabled by your spirit to keep thinking about it and to respond in whatever practical manner we can, in our private reading, in our group reading, in the workshops that we are looking forward to be part of, Help us, Lord, that we may step out of our comfort zone for the sake of growing and maturing in you. This is for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask in his name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Boon. It all depends on how one responds to the gospel. This is the moment, family, we come to participate in the Lord's table. I request you to please raise your hands if you have not received the elements so that the team can reach, you, reach out to you. Let us prepare our hearts for partaking in the Lord's table. Is there anybody who has not received? Please continue to raise your hand. Yeah. It is important that we come in confession and in self-examination because we do make mistakes. We do go astray and we do distance ourselves from the Lord knowingly or unknowingly. Let us not think that we are worthy. So family, let's just pause for a few moments and then I will lead you in giving thanks for the elements.
this pauses to examine ourselves and not to come in pride but to come looking within and looking up to God and saying I'm not worthy Lord but you are worthy Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks for your salvation plan for us sinners. We want to thank you, Lord, for your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was faithful and obedient to you, Father, to the point of death on the cross. Father, we thank you that you raised him from the dead. And the third day, you glorified him. And you have set him at your right hand. And in him, you have promised forgiveness of our sins, our salvation, and also the resurrection of this body. Lord, we take this bread in remembrance of the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. This body was broken for our sins, and even when we drink this juice, it reminds us of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for the washing away of our sins. We are grateful and are thankful for your love for us and for this great salvation plan for undeserving sinners like us. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Family, let me remind all of us that this is for those who walk with the Lord. This is for those who have placed their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and have given their lives to him, have confessed their sins, and have confessed the need of a Savior. All those who know him as Lord are welcome to take part. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and Master, we appreciate that you're here. But we also, but we would like you to kindly observe and not take part. I would like to read a warning from the scriptures from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 to 29. It says, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat the bread together.
In the same way, he <clears throat> also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink from the cup together. Let's give thanks. We thank you, Lord, for a time like this when we are reminded of the great sacrifice on the cross. When we are reminded of the Last Supper, when you instituted this ordinance for your people. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for us. And thank you, Lord, for giving us eternal life. Lord, enable us to live a life that reflects Jesus Christ and brings you glory. We give you thanks. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Family, the Word of God encourages and invites us today that we pay heed to it while there is still time and that it is not too late to start hearing and obeying the Word of God. In response to the Word of God uh, and the in obedience of it, it is time for us to the to respond to it. So let us bring our offerings and our tithes. Let's give thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, Gracious God, Lord, we thank you for the reminder this morning that our true wealth lies in abiding closer to you by reading your word. And Lord, that everything we possess is temporary. And so Lord, we wholeheartedly bring these offerings and tithes and seek your blessings on them. And we pray that you would keep the passion within us to use these resources for the advancement of your kingdom and betterment of the church till the North India hears the gospel. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Shall we all rise for the closing song?
Good morning, and we thank you for joining us uh, here at Bible Bhavan, as well as all those who are joining us online. And if you are watching us online this morning, we hope it is because you have been unable to come here for some reason, and not just because it is cold and more comfortable to sit in bed and watch online. We would also like to welcome Brother Navneet Chhabra. Uh, who's worshipping with us this morning. Welcome, brother. Just a few announcements. Uh, we do have events right through the week as we start off with the year 2024. And you'll find a snapshot of these events on the screen. But if you want more information about them, and if you want to refer to them, you can get onto our website. That's www.biblebhavan.org. You also have this uh, small sheet which has been given to you as you came in. That's the spring calendar for the next three months. And you can call our church admin on the number which is shown. That's 8860634892. If you're here at Bible Bhavan, the front desk will be active. And today we'll have Chui and Shekinah at the front desk. 
Thank you. You will get more information from them regarding our events and programs. Special welcome if you are visiting with us. If you are here for the first time, we'd like to give you a copy of the church brochure. May I request you to raise your hands, please, if you're here for the first time. You'll get a copy of the brochure, which has a number of cards inside. And you'll find uh, the, each of these cards will indicate an event which takes place in the church, either during the week or some sometime during the year. And so you'll, you'll get more information regarding these. And like I said, you can refer to uh, the website or you can call up the church admin for more information. Thank you, team. The welcome team will also meet with the visitors in the conference room, and that will be announced later. We have events after the service every Sunday. And today we'll have the membership class in the conference room after the service. The focus group, that's the fellowship of Christian adult singles, will meet in the prayer room at 12. That's for the group that is in the, within, between the ages of 26 and 32. And the leadership meeting will take place in the conference room at 12.15. Not the change, it's not at 12.30, it's 12.15. You have 15 minutes less to have your lunch. The prayer ministry is always available here. And so if you are in need of prayer for any reason, please remain seated after the service. And the prayer team will come and pray with you. So I request the prayer team members to please stand. There are a few members at the back as well. Thank you. There's a special Thanksgiving lunch after the service today that's being given by uh, Rhythm and Mang. And this will be their last Sunday as they leave uh, for some time for, uh, for studies abroad. And so we'll come to that later, but please join in for the lunch. And they are very thankful to the church for supporting them in prayer every step of their journey. We look forward to meeting you again here next week. The meteorology section has termed this phase of the weather as a severe cold wave. And if you are wondering whether you should step out into this weather or remain comfortably at home, uh, I'd like to tell you about a, an incident which happened with a pastor he was he went to a, a petrol bunk to refuel his car and he found that because of a long weekend there was a big rush in the a big rush of uh, cars there and so the attendant recognized him and said pastor i'm very sorry for the long delay but you know people tend to wait for the last minute before they take undertake a long journey the pastor said, don't worry, it's the same in my line of business. <laughs> People tend to wait for the last minute before the other take a long journey. I hope we get the message. <laughs> Do have a blessed week ahead. Thank you. Well, it's a bittersweet moment for our church as we are going to be sending off our um, dear friends, lovely ones from our mates. So I will ask uh, uh, Pastor Thomas Gisku to come forward, followed by Mang and Rhythm. I would like also to invite the pastors, all the pastors in this church to come, to come up on stage. Pastor Andrew, Pastor Namgil, Pastor Ruben is has past Ruben left. All right, let's begin with uh, Thomas, Pastor Thomas. Um, personally, I I met him first in Lucknow Anugrah Ashram, as he was mentioning in his testimony. I studied in Saint Mary's or what 
with St. Mary's School in Lucknow. And, and after that, I found him doing ashram course and asked, well, why, why are you doing ashram course after your last 12? He said, I could not produce my domicile certificate to do BA. I thought that was n not really a big thing. But anyway, you continue. And then I, I talked to Pastor Isaac. I think we should have Thomas come to Delhi. And as he mentioned, he came to do the preaching course. He did very well. After that, he uh, joined as an intern. And during his time here, he completed, he graduated from Delhi University also, and uh, the BA pro, uh, the BA honors. Okay. And currently, he is pursuing MTH. So this guy has worked very hard, both in the, in the church, in the institute, and personally uh, also uh, as a student of God's Word, and then ordained as a youth pastor. And uh, we are sending away one of the best workers uh, in the leadership uh, training, leadership principles. And they say, you want to depute somebody to another work, send the one you will miss. Okay, <laughs> Don't send somebody you don't want because he will go and destroy the work. And so we are going to miss... Uh, uh, Pastor Thomas, uh, but we are also glad that he is being deputed to go back to his own hometown, Jharkhand. Okay? And so uh, that's what I envy because I don't know whether DBI will start any work in Manipur that I will be asked to go and do some work there. But here is our brother going back to his home, hometown, not as a student, but as a pastor, as a regional leader. And uh, our blessing for you is that may the joy of the Lord be your strength so that you'll be found faithfully serving till the end. We are giving this to Mang and Rhythm, okay? Yeah. But uh, we're not giving one to Pastor Thomas because we are preparing his luggage full of Bibles, <laughs> thousands of them. That's what we do. We send boxes and boxes of Bibles so that they are distributed. And uh, we, we give this to Mang and Rhythm, not because they don't have one, but, but it's just our symbol that this is what we uphold. This is what brings us together in the church. And this is what we pursue that in times to come, we will, that we will hold on to this. Like Pastor Isaac would say, uh, do not hold... Hold loosely to the rest of the things in this world that hold tightly to the Word of God. I can't repeat exactly what he said, but that's uh, the essence of what, what I was, we we're saying. Among and Rhythm, Rhythm came to us a as a little girl, 2006. I remember uh, summer Bible camp. We would remove all these chairs, and the children were made to sit here. And Rhythm would sit and be part of the summer Bible camp, and then she, she never uh, left us. And... Uh, um, she, she, she was active in the junior church, graduated, and then soon after graduating from junior church, she became the leader of church now. That did so well, and then she continued till today as one of the deaconesses, and she is flying away. I'm not very good during farewell, um, trying my best uh, not to break down. <laughs> Uh, Mang, in his short time with us, was uh, such a joy to have him. You spoke in the Church Now meeting, and uh, I don't know what else you did, but uh, a lot of time you, you saw him holding camera and going to the corners, and later in this plate on the screen, beautiful pictures. So in the, within a few months of his time with us, uh, Mang had contributed so well. We are very honored to have uh, the, the butlers with us, Rhythm's parents and Rhythm. Sister uh, Divya, uh, to be part of this uh, little bye-bye that we say, hoping that we will meet again, even in this in this life. So, uh, Pastor Andrew, you can give this to to Mang and Rhythm. Well, this is what we want to say again: that may our loss. Here at Bible Bhavan, be it again for those who will receive them in the new location. Uh, the more joyful we will be, the, mo uh, the more 
success and blessings you receive. Mang is going back to the U.S., to Kansas City, Missouri. He will be pursuing um, what is called a leveling course, Masters in Theology at Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. And they will be leaving on the 10th of January. And uh, as announced, we are going to enjoy a meal sponsored by Bang and Freedom. So let us look forward to that, okay? Um, did I leave anything? Shall we be uh, upstanding to support and to extend our blessing as I lead in, in prayer? Uh, Father, we come to you uh, in this moment, thanking you as we look back to the years that you have given us. And we are thankful that in, in the real sense that what began well also ended well. And, and so this is because of your blessing. We do not take this for granted. At the same time, we acknowledge that we are feeble people. So as our dear ones, Mang and Rhythm, as they leave to be far away from us, we pray that uh, you will help them to recognize your presence in their lives. Because your promise is that you will be the Emmanuel, not just once in a while or when we pray to you, but that is your promise that you will be with us forever. So in success and failure, Lord, we pray that they may be given the courage to call out to you in humility, giving praise to you for success and humble enough to acknowledge failure and to repent and to come back to you and again and again. We pray for your protection from pride, greed, covetousness, love of money, and all forms of worldliness that are so abundant everywhere. Every step we take, these are the things chasing us. We pray, Lord, that you would keep them from there. We also pray that true selflessness, enabled by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, thereby transforming them in the likeness of Christ, be real, not by their own effort, coming out so spontaneously as real that they may be seen as self-giving people for the, as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for fruitfulness in ministry. We pray for more breakthroughs in what they want to achieve for you in degrees, in your marriage, children, and ministry opportunities. Grant us according to your grace also that we may get to meet each other again in, even in this world. Even as we are very certain and secure that we will one day be in your presence forever. Thank you again for Pastor Thomas Gisku. We look forward to many testimonies of your blessing under his leadership. We pray that you will also give him a God-fearing woman to be his wife who will stand and serve together in your house. We pray that you will give him wisdom, skill, knowledge, and ability to lead his team, that he would be able to identify with his team members and with the servant heart that he may serve there. Protect him from the dangers associated with living in that particular city and the state. And also we do pray that you will help him to recognize the opportunities that you provide him. And that the churches, the leaders, and the community of your people he meet there will be a source of great encouragement. May they be used in great manners that the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ will be established. The church strengthened, your people matured, all these things for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask with in thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated.
Church, can I just request you to please be upstanding for the benediction? Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The service has come to an end, but we do have some, some more things. We are so happy to have uh, uh, Michelle and Rahul and their family and friends uh, with us today. Welcome, you know, very warm welcome, as they look forward to their wedding tomorrow. Today we will also be, uh, we also have the care groups uh, that will meet right here in the in the church just for five ten minutes to pray together to update their records if required and and then we will we will move out and as we move out as uh, after the care groups have met i will request uh, mang and rhythm to be with pastor bowen right there and pastor thomas as well so that people can meet you as well so if if i can request the care group leaders to just um Stand up wherever they are. We have your lists and signboards. And and uh, thank you so much. Uh, today being the first Sunday of the year, uh, some of you have already picked up your promise cards on the 31st watch night service and on the 1st as well. But if you haven't picked up your promise card from the word of God, um, as you move out of the hall, they will be available on these two doors here and you can pick up for yourself and for your family as well. Thank you. So if the care group leaders can please uh, uh, pick up and go to their corners and, and just spend some five, 10 minutes in, in praying. And also after that, if I can request Mang and Rhythm to be at, and Pastor Thomas to be with Pastor Bon at the, at the gate so people can meet you. Thank you. Ah, oh, I've missed it again. Give me a minute. We have Brother Trichow and Carolyn and, and, and uh, Andreas and Divya, if you're here. Uh, we would like to honor our guests if, uh, uh, who are visiting us today. If you could kindly stand wherever you are, uh, our guests who are, who are here for the first time. What a joy to have you here with us. And uh, we would love to have you, uh, if, you're not, if you're not worshiping anywhere else in the city uh, and you're here, we would love to have you back. Can I just request you, uh, if you could just walk out with uh, Trichau and Carolyn and also receive a welcome fact from the church. Uh, if you can, if you can, you can leave now. Thank you. Thank you. The care groups can meet, and then we will, please don't go away. We have a special meal uh, sponsored by Rhythm.